Good morning everyone, it's Jelani. The morning scripture came from Matthew chapter 25 verse 40. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for thanking you for another day of life that you have given us. And dear Lord, I just thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding. And I pray that you keep us in this peace whilst we endure in this world. I pray for those who are lacking peace, who are lacking hope, who are lacking faith, who are going through anguish or grief or tribulation or any such thing. All of us that are going through our mo the motions of life, dear Lord, I pray that you continue to help us and strengthen us, which is our prayer each and every day that you lead us by your Holy Spirit, that you instruct us by your word so that we can fulfill your good, acceptable, perfect and holy will as you have taught us, Lord Jesus, as, as, and as you are abiding us, let us do so and bring you the pleasure in which you have created us for. You created us for your pleasure. And as we have this time, we don't know how long, we just pray that we use it faithfully as faithful servants as watchful servants as ones that are doing the things that you have committed unto us as those are, who are sh as ones that are being an example and an ambassador of our lord which is to love one another as you have taught us i would pray that we are not found as those unfaithful servants who are not watchful who are not doing the will of the lord who are who are not being or being and yeah not being ambassadors of the lord we do not want to be in that company dear lord so as you have promised us i pray that you renewed you renew our hearts our minds you wash us pure and clean dear lord so that we can be a sanctified vessel for your holy spirit and dear Lord, as always, we do pray. <coughs> we do pray that you continue to help us throughout the tests and trials of life. Strengthen us, dear Lord, because we do not rely on our own strength or our own abilities, but we do rely on you. And we want to always be mindful that we have an enemy that has powers, like he was created with, with spiritual powers. So we are only but flesh but you are the lord god almighty so as you said if we resist the devil he shall flee from us and we pray that this is the case that you in us and we in you we shall resist together all the works of the evil one so that he may flee from us and as always we don't want to do this for our children also and equip them with this knowledge so that even in their youth they may know the strength that they have in you and by you lord jesus christ and that they shall Grow in the relationship with you so that when they are of age, they shall never neglect or reject you. As always, we do ask that you lead us in spirit and in truth, spirit and in truth in your word this morning to the glory of God, our Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So Matthew 25 verse 40 says, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say, and, sorry, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Amen. All right, so to be honest, I'll just read this, the top, the heading of my Bible. It says, The Last Judgment Described. All right, this chapter kind of deals with some parables that Jesus gives, right? And as I was reading it this morning, and I was just reminded to say that sometimes it is let me say taught or conveyed um, that our Lord is just this lovey, lovey dovey God, right? Not to say that he's not love because he is the definition of love. But what I'm trying to say is that his justness and his righteousness is maybe neglected. Because as we said, we can't neglect one characteristic of him. And just dwell on one. Now we have to look at him in his entirety as much as he has shown and revealed himself unto us through Christ Jesus. Right? And 
I said, yes, he's all loving. So he is the definition of love. He's the definition of goodness. But he's also the de definition of righteousness and judgment and justness, right? And this chapter deals with how he's just, right? And when you read it, it if you actually picture it, somebody might look at it and say, oh, but this is harsh. This is a bit harsh or this part is a bit harsh. But I said it's not harsh because he's all knowing also and all wise. So all have and all, as I said, all good. So all of his judgments are just righteous and good. Right. And perfect. Right. So we have to always question like which camp do we want to be in? Like why, why were some accounted righteous and some accounted unrighteous right and um the chapter deals with it it actually gives you the the, the comp it tells you why right uh with the virgins it tells you that the ones that were not prepared those were accounted as the unrighteous ones and the ones that were prepared are counted as righteous and we know if we're prepared we are prepared by the word and by the spirit of god right and do it with the other example with the the servants with the talent again the slothfulness and the um what's the opposite of slothful and being zealous to do the work of god and as we said doing the work of god is allowing him to fulfill his will in us right but being slothful is the contrary right and we saw where he actually told them to throw it was that one the one when he said to throw the the, the, the unfaithful one into outer darkness I believe so. All right. So again, read it. Because as I said, we, we can't neglect that God is just. And he's coming, as I was speaking yesterday, when he comes this second time around in his glory, he's not coming to die for us again. He already done that. There's no more payment, right? He's not coming to save the world. The world already have salvation in him if they decide to choose and accept it, the free gift of God. But if it is rejected, right, when he comes, he's coming again to judge the living and the dead. Those who are accounted faithful servants shall be with him in his goodness. And those who accounted him, accounted him as an enemy, right, as something debased or something um, of no importance, those are the ones that are going to be thrown in the lake of fire, pretty much. That is the last judgment, <laughs> right? And... We don't, we don't want this for anybody. I never pray this for anybody. And we shouldn't be praying this for anybody, by the way, right? Because, as I said, like, God, Jesus didn't teach us this. The fulfillment of all things is to love one another as Jesus Christ has taught. And he taught us to love our brothers and sisters, yeah, in the faith. Told, told us to love mother and father, yes. And he told us to love even our enemies, right? But ultimately we ought to love him our heavenly father through christ jesus above all things that we are not going to be bound by mother or father or bound by brother or sister or bound by anyone right to go against him right not wife not anything we should be able to be in that state of mind that if they become enemies of god we shall not join <laughs> we shall not join the company right it sounds a bit harsh but that is what the actual scripture teaches us and we pray, that's why we ought to be praying for one another and praying for each other and not praying against each other, right? And as we just read here in this last um, parable, it was just showing you that the faithful servant is going to be the ones that are going to be ambassadors of our, our Lord, right? They're going to be the ones that um, are going to be showing the love of Christ. And as he said here, like the faithful ones, um he just was giving them that, that analogy like because he did it to the least of these he is going to be doing what do you say as well in as much as you have done it unto the least of these my brethren you have done it unto me and go and read the parable i'm not going to go into it um this morning but we as i said we are we see the contrary the ones that did not do it to the least of these right they didn't clothe even when he was um sick, didn't feed him, right? Didn't take him in, didn't visit him in prison and all of these things. And as it says here, in 45, then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to the one of the least of these, ye have not done it to me. 
and these shall go away in everlasting punishment, but the righteous into an eternal life. Again, the just and judgment of God. So I'm going to leave it at that this morning. Any questions, anything that you want to share, you can jump into the comment section or you can send it into the word at eachreach1.org. And as much as the Lord has led me, taught me and kept me over the years, I will answer them according to his word, according to his principles, according to his will, being led by his Holy Spirit. So have a blessed day, everyone, and God's willing, we'll catch up again tomorrow.